I have done extensive research and questioning on it. Now, plant medicine is something that every single uh, uh, group, no matter what race, culture, have practiced. And so there is credence to all of them. Is every single plant medicine per good for every single person? No. And this is where I, I, I don't want to use the word caution. I think that when one decides that they want to try a different plant medicine or a particular plant medicine, they should do the research and think about what it is they have an affinity to. So for example, right now, microdosing and mushrooms has become very, you know, trendy. Um, cannabis in all the different forms has also become trendy, as has ayahuasca. All are seeking the same thing, commune with the divine. In essence, it is a brain chemical that gets triggered or produced when you ingest any of these plant medicine. The same substances are also produced in the brain when you meditate. And so it really is sort of like plant medicines are catalysts for the divine connection or for you know the wisdom coming in. So I tell people all the time, this is what I tell people, persons with melanin already have that medicine inside of themselves. And so what you will find is that you know the unmelanated groups will search more for these plant medicines to trigger what it is that they need to trigger. Think about it. The hippie period had to do with the psychedelics and everybody was searching for this thing, for that thing, to give them the high, to give them that trip. If you think about it, those tribes from the motherland only used those substances when they were going on a mission to achieve a certain objective for the tribe. So I tell people or what I have, the conclusion that I have come to is that the medicine is inside of me because I'm melanin rich. And so I meditate, I pray, I feed myself with the right food so that my organs will function well and that my brain and my organs will be talking to each other. And I will get the same value as someone who uses the plant medicine. I will gain the same wisdom that they will get during that experience. And I did, I have asked a number of my friends and they explain it as a euphoric feeling that they get. But the thing with euphoria is that it wears off. And then you feel as if you have to go back to repeat that experience. So what I suggest or recommend is that people choose uh, meditation, sound, movement, good nutrition, and good thoughts to bring in that wisdom into their entire, into, into their being. That wisdom, once it's inside, is yours forever. You tap in and it's yours. You do not have to have an experience to pull that wisdom out, right? So I am not against 
um, any of this because I know for a fact that there was a powerful reason for their use. Uh, a lot of it had to do with the dimensions. And so the wise ones, the healers, would sometimes recognize that they would need to travel into another dimension or into time, a different time and space to bring back the medicine to solve the problem in the now, in the third dimension. And so this goes back again to our conversation about anxiety, depression, and mental illness, because I do not think there is any such thing. What is happening more and more today is that there is uh, the veils between the different dimensions are thinner than they used to be. And so some people are traveling between the dimensions and they are not able to process what goes on in 3D, what goes on in the dream world, and what goes on in 5D or 7D, right? Now think about this. In the past, you would have tribes, and this person would be born with the gift of healing, this person would be born with the gift of prophecy, this one would be born with the gift of, 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 of changing reality or whatever. Now we're in the modern times. The family lineage of that person, they come with those gifts into this world. And so they're seeing stuff from the past, the present, the future. It helped them when they were in their tribe 200 years ago in the motherland. Now you're in this reality. Nobody needs your help anymore, but you have the gifts and you are now supposed to cope in this world, right? You, uh, you can see spirit, and you can see people aura, and you can see when somebody's sick, and you can see when somebody evil, and there's no place for that. The Western civilization leaves no room for that. And so you feel like you're crazy, but you're not, you just have a gift that's not being utilized, right? So this is what I think needs to be emphasized. And I, I get so much of that every day. I guess because I, I operate at a certain vibration, I will attract in people of that vibration and then they'll explain things to me and I'm like, oh, then they have children and their children are struggling with issues and I'm like, um, your child has a spiritual gift. There is no problem. Stop taking them to the psychiatrist because you just need to talk to them and ask them what they're seeing and let the spiritual gifts come through without making them feel like, you know, yeah, they had this dream and everything that they dream comes through. Do not fear it. Utilize it. At this stage, you need to get assistance from someone who understands these things. You know? And this is why in our tradition in Jamaica, when people were not well physically, they went to the healer. And when they were not well, mentally they went to the healer because guess what they're all inextricably bound your mental health your physical health and your energy body illness starts in the energy fields you know i once had uh, an energy practitioner you know do some work in my hands and when he pressed, I felt a pain in my little finger. And I kind of felt like something was running here. It felt uncomfortable. And he says, you're having a problem with your heart. And it's like, give me a break. My heart? Just become a fit. I went and got my heart checked. Nothing. 
a year later, they found an issue with my heart. So these things get picked up in the energy field way ahead of time. And if someone is trained in energy healing, they can pick up the problem and solve it in the energy field before it manifests in the physical body. Yeah. It is very feasible for persons who are struggling financially to maintain a healthy lifestyle. In fact, there is a direct correlation with affluence and ill health because sometimes what happens is when a society becomes more comfortable and they have more to consume, they consume the more. They overconsume, they overindulge, and they put on the weight, right? They overindulge in the alcohol, they overindulge in the sugars and the sweetness. They overindulge in the stimulants like the coffees and the Coca-Colas. Yeah? And so, if you really look at it, the simpler you eat is the healthier you'll be. And I'm going to just give an example because I'm here and I'm, I experienced this firsthand. When I bought my house, you know how when you buy your house, you have nothing else? And so you kind of have to, you know, reprioritize and scale down your spend. Well, I remember for the first six months of buying my house, I literally ate nothing but Kalaloo and banana because Kalaloo is cheap and banana is cheap. You buy some garlic, you buy some scotch bonnet and you have a meal every day and I would do a smoothie with the callaloo I would just add some cucumber some lime juice and some ginger and that was a morning smoothie so if you eat simpler by going to the green section or the market and buying the yams the potatoes the sweet peppers the carrots the chochos right the the greens then you would be way ahead of the game. You have your, you know, dried legumes, your lentils, your split pea, your broad beans. You can make a stew one day, you can make a soup another day. You can boil it and add it to your salad another day. And those things are not expensive. We tend to think Good health equates with going to the health food store and buying expensive supplements and extracts. No, you can get your nourishment from foods. And in fact, the more unprocessed foods you consume, the healthier you are. I would notice that the more money people have to spend is the more processed food they will consume. You can go into the supermarket and look at some people's trolleys and it's piled high with cookies and cakes and snacks and uh, drinks, sodas and sweet juices with additives, high fructose corn syrup, red yellow dye, um, preservatives, those things are what makes us ill, but they taste great because they also have flavor enhancers. And I cannot, I will not go into what those fla uh, flavor enhancers are made of. Some flavor enhancers are made of the fetuses and, 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 and uh, the, 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 the reproductive organs of different animals and all sorts of strange things. You're better off going and just buying some ground provision and some green vegetable, juicing it, stewing it, cooking it. Pumpkin, pumpkin. If you buy a whole pumpkin, that pumpkin can make so many meals for the day, sorry, for the week, for you and your family. If you buy three or four quarts of red peas, 
broad bean and lentils, you're, you're, you'll be able to feed your family for the whole entire month. Right? If you get your coconut milk and you squeeze it and refrigerate it or freeze it and you, you know, put it into sachets, you can have portions to add to your food and, you know, you can be healthy. One thing I'd like to stress though is that people move away from cooking once a week and freezing because when your food is frozen and reheated you lose a lot of the nutritional value of the food mm -hmm. and we have to recognize that food in its natural state has life force in it and we are nourished by the life force in addition to the vitamins and the minerals the life force of the food nourishes us when we cook it denature a lot with heat and then we freeze it we denature some more with the freezing and then we thaw it and microwave it we denature everything else in the microwave avoid the microwave right and try to prepare your meals fresh when you can as much as you can so you can get the vital forces of the food um, one thing that comes to mind is for example the milk from nut nut milks when you take a dried nut or bean and you pour water over it to soak it you are doing the most powerful thing that you can do for yourself because the life force that is required to take the seed or the bean out of dormancy into you know activating it to, to grow or to to germinate and you consume that you get that energy so for example when you have almond milk if you soak the almond overnight it starts the whole process of germinating. You reactivate the energy, the life force required to get that to start growing. You then wake up in the morning and blend that and consume that. You are consuming the goodness, live food. Yeah? So it is very simple once you understand how to nourish the body. It is very too simple to nourish the body properly. Not with a lot, with very little intelligently done right um, someone shared with me once photos of people on the beach in 1970 and photos of people on the beach in 2010 for example everybody on the beach in 1970 was average weight size they looked okay. The same cross section of the beach today has a whole lot more obesity. And this is straight across the board in all the different cultures, in all the different races. And so moderation in consumption. So it might be a blessing to not have a lot of money because then you consume just a little less and you'll be a little bit more intentional about what you do consume. So no, don't consume sweet drinks and Pepsi and bun and cheese, no. Go for the green juice, go for the ground provisions because again, ground provisions have the magnetic property of the earth, the fruits, and vegetables that bear in the, you know on top of the earth they have a different vibration so you need to have ground provisions you need to consume vegetables that grow on the plant yeah mix them and combine them and incorporate them all into your diet for people trying to get into meditation the fact that you want to get into meditation, you're always, you're halfway there because it means that you recognize that there is something missing 
in your life and that that thing that is missing will be, the gap will be filled by the meditation. And that is the truth. So all you really need to do is to find the meditational resource and you can find that online and then commit to a consistent practice of meditation. Now I recommend, I highly recommend morning meditations. Why? Again, it has to do with the circadian rhythm. And also it has to do with how the left and the right brain are working in the morning. Remember when you are sleeping, you go into different states. There's, some, there's a state called alpha, and when you just rise in the morning, your brain, your brain waves are alpha. And so to go into meditation is very easy because your brain is already vibrating at that frequency, right? I also must throw in that manifestation, which is a buzzword right now for everyone. Ma manifestation is speeds up when you are meditating and if you set your intentions early in the morning and go into the meditation the brain becomes just so much more intelligent in terms of helping you to navigate get navigate towards your goal and so it creates things like synchronicity and serendipity and you find yourself being in the right place at the right time every day if you meditate. Also, when you are meditating, you will find that your vibration is going to raise. And when your vibration raises, there are some people who you are currently interacting with that are going to fall away because you are no longer operating at the same vibrational level. So relationships will sometimes come to an end when you really start meditating. And you'll also find that you will be drawn to or attracted to persons who are vibrating at your level. So there are lots of benefits um, to meditating. And as I said before, once you want to start meditating, it's very easy for you to find the resources. I remember 20 years ago, it wasn't so easy to find meditation resources. You had to find a meditation group or a meditation teacher. Now we recognize and know that meditation really is silent contemplation and reflection and commune with self. And so that makes it very accessible to you all the time any time of day or night. Um, I've, I've been trained or participated in several different types of meditation. Some are guided. Some have you visualize certain things, you know, so that you go into the stillness quicker. Some have you chant a mantra silently to yourself. Some have you you know, just be still, right? But all of them ultimately have the same outcome, which is a more powerful connection with yourself and a more powerful connection with the divine or source or God. Well, the meditation, the number one benefit is to connect with the divine source, God, whatever you may call it, come back into the oneness. Because what has happened is that we are externally pulled. So we are pulled by the radio, the television, our devices, our relationships, and we leave no time to commune with self. Because within, the self is what, what some people recall, uh, uh, refer to as the higher self, the all-knowing, you know, portions of your self reside within. And there's only one way to tap into it, and that is in the silence through meditation. 
Scientists have also done the research and have found that some of the benefits of meditation include decreased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, um, decreased anxiety, um, decreased um, cravings. There is something that happens when you meditate. The left brain and the right brain, which are, have two different behaviors and two different set of responsibilities in the body, they integrate during meditation and it leads to greater cognition greater sol uh, problem solving ability, greater awareness overall. So you will be sharper in the boardroom, you will be sharper when it comes to problem solving, and you will be calmer. So a lot of people will tell you the first benefit that they recognize once they start meditating is that they are able to handle stress better and they're overall much calmer they don't flare up, they don't get angry, right? And it's just because the brain, the right and left brain, hemispheres of the brain, once, once they integrate, there is, there is um, more hmm, neural activity between the two hemispheres and they release, remember the brain, the autonomic nervous system is managed by the brain. When the brain is functioning well, it releases everything that it's supposed to release on time and in the right quantities. When the brain is not working well, there's overproduction of different substances in the body. There is overstimulation of just one part of the brain. Meditation balances out all of those things. And so people will realize that when they meditate, they're able to get a handle on stress, they're able to get a handle on anxiety and depression. To some extent, it may not solve everything. They're able to get a handle on their eating disorders that they may have, and they will find that they're able to go into exercise mode easier. Weight loss and weight gain regulation also can happen through meditation. So, so many benefits to meditating, your relationships also improve because you improve. So your reaction is going to be different and so the outcome is going to be different. I want, when I wor worked corporate, I was trying to encourage um, my co-workers to all meditate because if everyone is meditating and everyone's response is a little bit more, um, uh, you know, managed, then naturally you're going to have better um, work, work scenarios in terms of people interacting with each other. So I cannot even, I've only scratched the surface of the benefits of meditation. There are so many. I, I would like to just mention one last one. There is something that happens when one person meditates. They can shift the vibration in the general area. So you can walk into a space and know that there's someone who lives here that's meditating because the vibration feels different. So when one person meditates, the vibration shifts. When two persons meditate, there's an exponential benefit in terms of how much the vibration shifts. When you have large groups of people meditating, you can exponentially shift the vibration of the entire locality. And so you can shift probable outcomes, especially if you have a large group of people meditating and focusing on a, on, on a particular outcome. So if you have people meditating for peace, there will begin the, trap, the, the, the scenario of having 
more peace in that area. There have been instances when, they're, when they have introduced meditation into the prisons and the violence in the prisons subsided significantly. So also when large groups of people in a country are meditating, then violence decreases, illness decreases, and interpersonal relationships improve. So we have an opportunity with meditation to raise the vibration of a collective and improve the situation for the entire collective. So that's an important other reason from a spiritual perspective why people should meditate because the whole collective benefits when you meditate. Anxiety and depression are, 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 are di diagnosis of Western practitioners. Now, people will not make the connection between diet and spirituality and anxiety and depression, but our ancestors and, 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 and Jamaican tradition, they knew if, if your nerves start to take you, that they should go get some sour sap leaf and boil it and give you a you drink it at night time or some guava leaf. Because they're, they are inextricably bound, all of these things. And we need to recognize that we cannot con you know, compartmentalize one thing and this and the, you know your health is not over here your mental state is over here your nutrition is over here and your you know your, your your relationships are over here they're all bound when your liver is not working you're very angry you're also very depressed you're also very sluggish so many things can happen when your body is filled with toxins Right? If your body is filled with parasites, your temperament is also going to be disturbed. Right? I mean, biblically, they would refer to the demons and they always reference the pigs. If you eat a lot of pig, then you're going to get a lot of parasites and you're going to be filled with parasites. Your vibration is going to be lowered. Your vitality is going to be lowered. Your mental acumen is going to be lowered. Right? So when we think of anxiety and depression and these things are modern phenomena more so than before, it's because we are disconnected from ourselves. It is because we are disconnected from nature. It is because we are not nourishing our body properly and it is because we are not detoxing our bodies properly. So how do I propose to look at it? I think we should take, I recommend that we take the time to go and immerse in nature. That is the best thing you can do to get rid of your anxiety. Take your shoes off so you can reconnect with the earth, right? We are electromagnetic. The sun is electric. The earth is magnetic. We are electromagnetic. If we don't pray, if we don't meditate, the, the connection between heaven and earth becomes disconnected. We are the conductor. It, it, think about it. When we pray, I mean, and I'm not going to be religious here, I'm being spiritual here. When we pray, prayer is a form of commune with the divine and with nature. And so, if you were to do a visualization, when you pray, the light comes into your body through your crown chakra, and it goes through your entire body and it nourishes you. And then that's a circle. It's almost like, you know, in physics, you see the, the, the magnet and the, the flow of energy around it. That's exactly how it is with a human. We're here energy flows in it flows down through our feet into the earth and it's like that we also pulling it up from the earth and it goes around when that is interrupted or broken that is when you have the illness 
That's when you have depression. That's when you have anxiety. That is when you start to have physical ailments as well. Because one of the things that we, we emphasize a lot in Wellness Experience Jamaica is that sometimes illness is not necessarily physical, it is energetic. And so all you require is um, some energy healing. Energy healing is equal to immersion in, in nature. Go to the river, go to the beach, Go out into your lawn and lie down, right? Go up to the top if you're on a high building. Go out on the balcony and breathe in some fresh air. Watch the sun set. Watch the sun rise. Watch some birds in your garden, right? So those are some things that you can do to shift your energy. You can raise your energy or your vibration also by listening to music because music is a frequency, it's energy as well. And depression and anxiety sometimes have to do with the brain and one area being overactive or understimulated or undernourished. And so if you can stimulate the brain with some frequencies, and I always tell people, go onto YouTube and type in Solfregio frequencies, type in love frequency, type in frequency for anxiety, type in frequency for depression, type in frequency for sadness, jealousy, any kind of emotion, there is a frequency to assist the brain to come back into equilibrium, yeah? Another thing that you can do is dance. No, dancing has always been a part of our culture as a people, melanated people. We full a rhythm. It's like we were made with rhythm. So dancing is very much a part of melanated peoples. It is something that we do naturally. We hear the drums, the drums are healing. People don't recognize that drums and rhythm are healing. And just a, a sidebar, in certain African countries, if any member of the tribe started experiencing signs of mental instability, they would get them out there, they would play the drums and they have to stamp their feet, stamp, stamp, stamp. If you think about it, that's like you're grounding, you're earthing. You're reconnecting back with Mother Nature and, this, and the vibration. So energetically, right, mental illness, anxiety, depression have to do with the energy body being out of balance. So the dancing that we do as, as Jamaican people and as people of color is part of what keeps us grounded, what keeps us connected. Every ceremonial, that um, ritual for every people all over the world involves dancing. It involves sound and it involves dancing, right? So I tell people, listen, if you're feeling depressed or if you feel anxious, turn on some music in your living room and dance, right? If you like reggae, put on the reggae. If you like salsa, put on the salsa. Whatever it is, put it on and dance and you will feel better. I mean, some people are going to say, come on, this is chemical and this needs to be medicated. No, no. Before medication, people handled this kind of thing with ease. They knew what to, 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 to enhance the, the nutrition with. They knew what to do to the body to get it back, you know. And, and it, so it can be done. Another thing that this might seem far-fetched and unrelated to anxiety and depression, but a simple thing like coming home and taking a bath, a long warm bath in a solution of sea salt, bicarbonate of soda, and Epsom salts can also bring you back into, uh, into balance, get rid of or release the anxiety, and quell, to some extent, certain aspects of the depression. 
No, I still recommend that people go and see a, a professional or practitioner if it is severe. But if you can incorporate these things into your day, then you will find that those things get diminished. The thought form that you hold also will influence anxiety or depression. Persons who suffer from anxiety and depression uh, dwell a lot in the past or dwell a lot in the future. So they're anxious about the future or they're sad about the past. And so if you can become a little bit more present and just say, listen, man, I'm grateful. I'm here, I'm healthy, I'm strong, I have food on the table, I'm gonna have one little work, although the people them are stress me. If you can just look at it and change your thought patterns to one of more gratitude and acceptance, then you are good. And the last one, and it's not the least, it's actually the most significant thing. If you can think of what it is that might be the root cause of your anxiety or your depression, and you can remove the root cause, then I think you'll be in a good place. So if it's a relationship and you can remove it, then by all means go ahead. If it's a job and you can remove it, then by all means try to do so. If it's a living situation and you can change it, then try to do so. But at all times, be looking at how you can figure out what the root cause is. Yeah? And that would be it in terms of anxiety and depression. Um, on another note, there are some mineral and vitamin deficiencies that can cause depression and anxiety. B12 is one of them. So if your B12 is very low, your iron will also be low. And if your iron is low, you're going to be sad, you're going to feel hopeless, you're going to feel weak and helpless. And so sometimes all you need to do is eat some food or get some supplementation. Mm. And the body follows the mind. If the mind is weak, the body is also going to be weak in terms of how it will manage itself, right? So I think the key to really getting rid of stress eating is to master the mind. And that is by just being aware and being more conscious of what it is that you want. If you set an intention that you are going to master this stress eating, then you're going to go do the research. You're going to go see, okay, what's causing me to, eat, to, to stress eat? What do I eat when I stress eat? Okay, those things will not enter my home. If you don't have it, you can't do it. So you have to be more disciplined, more intentional, right? And you have to recognize that you are in charge of you. The ice cream cannot be in charge of you. The chocolates cannot be in charge of you. Although chocolates are very powerful. <laughs> I, I, listen guys, I can say this because I'm a chocoholic, if, if there's such a thing. And I'm also a snackaholic. So I like salty, crunchy, and I like sweet. No, there's a study that shows that the things that you crave are related to an emotion that you may have and you express that emotion through the food that you crave. I'm told that people who like salty crunchy have internalized anger that they have to express through eating crunchy salty. So I must have a lot of uh, anger because I love crunchy salty. So I would say to everyone who's having issues with stress eating, go do the research on you know, why you have that craving for sweet or you have that craving for cold or you have that crave, you know, some people eat ice. In the old time days, them say, if you eat ice, you have man problem. We now know that, you know, people who are iron deficient sometimes 
will have the craving for ice. Yeah? So look at the stress eating that you do and do the research on it because everything is on the internet. And sometimes it may be a little off, but you can find the right answer if you continue to search. Yeah? And um, in terms of getting that mind strong, you get that mind strong through meditation. Meditation is this phenomenon that people think it's some art like you have to learn gymnastics or you have to learn how to ride a bicycle, you have to learn how to meditate. No. Meditation is the same thing as contemplation. It is the same thing as introspection. It's the same thing as being in the silence, right? They've made meditation into something fancy. Well, if you want to be fancy, then go on YouTube and type in meditation um, for this or meditation for that, and perhaps get a guided meditation where they will take you verbally through um, some visualizations that help to relax you and get you into that place. But meditation really needs to be a personal effort that is done um, on your own in the silence. Um, there are some meditation groups. So you can type in meditation groups and see if you can find one in your area. At Wellness Experience Jamaica, we have a morning meditation from 5.30. It's a 11 minute meditation. So you have no excuse to say, oh, you don't have time. 11 minutes in the morning is something that everyone can afford, right? So either do it with some aid from um, YouTube or any other digital device that you might have with, with music. Uh, there's also frequencies that are great for meditating. Um, crystal bowls are great to meditate to. Flutes are great to medit meditate to. Shamanic drums are great to meditate to. Um, the sound of the sea or the sound of rain, those are great sounds to meditate to. And those are nature sounds. So when I say immersion in nature is a healing modality, it is the truth, right? So you can use your device, record the sounds of the waves if you go by the sea, and then you can use that when you're doing your meditation. The greatest advice that I can give to someone who lives, a Jamaican who lives abroad, who does not have access to roots and herbs, is to just think back to what your grandmother or your mother used to give you. Go online and type in that herb, and let me tell you something, it is available online. Amazon has every conceivable herb that exists on the planet. So you can order her herbs from Amazon. Now, I just want to say that Jamaica has 80% of the planet's healing herbs. And everybody who is hearing this needs to understand that, you know, Jamaican is not normal. Jamaican herbs are also not normal. They are the most potent version of the herb. And, and the scientists have tested it. They've tested our turmeric against all the other turmerics and ours is the most powerful. They've tested our ginger and the, the extracts from our Jamaican ginger are just stronger, more potent than all over. So our aloe vera, our, our salsa perilla, everything that grows in Jamaica is stronger. So what I'd recommend for people who live abroad, type in Jamaican herbs and you will get a number of suppliers, Jamaican suppliers who are currently shipping to the US, to the UK, to Canada. But definitely type it in and you can get um, the Jamaican herbs. If you cannot get the herbs um, and you you know, some people may not resonate with the herbs for making tea. You can get the tincture. The tincture, I think, is an easier way of delivering the benefits of the herb. And a tincture is anybody who grew up in Jamaica in the 50s and 60s will know that 
every grandmother in Jamaica have a bottle of white rum. It have been um, some ganja in there. My grandmother had a, a bottle with a, a, a centipedes in there. So if she buck up a centipede, she chop it up and put it into the rum, and that was an antidote for any kind of sting. So tinctures are usually some alcohol extracting the, the qualities or the properties of the herb. And so all you need are a few drops in your water daily to be able to get the benefit of that herb. So tinctures, herbal tinctures of whatever herb you recollect that you need. Another point I'd like to make in terms of the herbs is that herbs work better when they're combined. It's just like um, a herb might be, you know, they say this herb is good for this. Well, it's best if you get another two and put them into the mix. So herbs, believe it or not, and this, I, I cannot prove this. Herbs work better in threes, fives, sevens, and nines. So if you're gonna combine a herb, do two, do three, sorry, not two, not four. Do threes, do fives. So for example, you go with your ginger, your turmeric, add something else, put in some thyme or some peppermint, three herbs. Yeah? So what are some of the things that you can do right now to boost your immune system? The first thing, remove all fear, remove all sadness. Because fear and sadness, believe it or not, messes with your immune system, right? What I recommend in terms of a daily practice is rising early with the sun or before the sun. That's very important. We have forgotten the circadian rhythm, the daily rhythm. We are designed with the daily rhythm in mind, right? But we watch TV until late or we go party until late. And it messes up. So if you can rise with the, with the sun, right? Get outside and take some deep breaths. In other words, do breath work in the air, the morning air is the freshest, coolest version of oxygen that you can get. It has more life force in it than any other time of day. That's number one. Number two, if you can commune or connect with the divine in whatever form you choose, whether it's through prayer or meditation, it is said that just the act of clasping the hands or taking deep breath relaxes the vagus nerve, which runs, it's a nerve which runs like all the way through the body, runs through the chest. It relaxes the vagus nerve and overall for the rest of the day, you are just in a better place. You handle stress better, you process better, you make decisions better, you are sharper, right? So connecting with the divine or going into the silence is so important. A lot of people don't connect that act with the act of boosting the immune system, but those are the kinds of things that get lost with Western medicine. They do not connect those simple acts and rituals that we used to do as a people in the old days to the, the loss of immune system or immune system compromise, right? The next thing I always recommend is that you drink a cup of water or a glass of water. Um, some people like to add a little lime juice to it. What that does is that acts as like a little detergent, a little internal wash. It also reactivates the stomach juices because the whole body has gone to sleep. The digestive system has sh shut down, yeah? So when you get up and you drink a glass of water, that reactivates things. When your digestive system is vigorous and robust, your immune system automatically is also robust, right? The next thing I like to, and this sounds like a lot, but if you can commit to doing it in this order, you will find that you are more vigorous. The next thing, movement. Now, 
Movement means just getting up and walking. Take a small, a quick walk, a vigorous walk, a brisk walk, breathing in the oxygen intentionally. Commune with the divine. You can lump them all into one if you want, yeah? But think of movement not just because the doctor said you should move or movement is good. Think of movement as a means of getting the blood pumping, circulating through your entire body. Not just the blood, because remember the blood is assisted by the heart, but the lymph. The lymph has no heart to pump it and relies on our movement. So when we move, we walk, move those hands as well because you have some lymph nodes and lymph, you know, the lymph system is scattered all over. And the more you move your arms along with your legs is the more it will move and circulate along the breast area. The next thing, a light breakfast of fruit, fruit juice. You know, I, I prefer green juice. Why green juice? Because green juice tends to alkaline the body and it tends to give you all the nourishment you need. Green juice is filled with chlorophyll. Yeah, chlorophyll is the closest thing to hemoglobin. It carries oxygen and our blood needs the oxygen. So if you can have green juice, you know, and, and light fruits rather than a heavy breakfast that is laden with the proteins and the carbs, then you do so. Your heaviest meal should be lunch and your next heaviest would be your dinner. Now, it would sound like that's a lot to do, but if you can do just those, your immune system will be so much more vigorous. The other thing that I also like to recommend that people do is go to bed early. Early to bed, early to rise. You know what they say, there's a reason why they said it. They were able to observe very clearly that the persons who followed that rhythm were more successful, their temperament was more balanced, and they were able to achieve a lot more in the day. Right. Um, another thing that I always like to throw into the mix, try to balance the types of food you consume throughout the day. We all like a lot of sweet, it's delicious. And we love salt because that also has a nice little kick to it. But also try to include some sour and some bitter. Why sour and bitter? Because Sour and bitter immediately wake up the liver and get the liver going, get the liver uh, more active and the liver is the workhorse of the body. So if the liver is vibrant and robust, then your immune system by extension will be robust. So include a little bitter tea once a week if you don't like bitter things have some sour and i'm not talking about candy sour i'm talking about lime sour um, tamarind ball sour because those things also wake up the liver and get it going mm -hmm.